Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is V for today's video. I'm so so excited because we are heading back home to Birmingham, my hometown, and we are going to be going to watch a day in the life of this amazing girl called Carrie Ho, a young engineer that just graduated last year. So she's a recent graduate, engineering graduate, and she works at Network Rail, which is so cool and so exciting. And you guys know on this channel, I love, love, love promoting different opportunities and letting you guys know that the world is your oyster and like no one can box you off or put you in a box and say oh girls can only do this or women can do this or whatever like no we are women we are powerful we are multifaceted and we have every option under the sun available to us and we're going to explore those options and opportunities so since I've now graduated and obviously I studied education policy um it means that I'm just waiting to start my job in September which is going to be very much based on education and all that good stuff but I know that not everybody on this channel wants to do the same thing as me and I love that because it means that we are a diverse group of young people and yeah I just want to show you guys boys and girls what the opportunities are available to you I'm so excited and you guys are going to come along with me obviously before we begin I just need to say a massive thank you to Network Rail for sponsoring today's video because it means that I get to share new opportunities with you guys so I'm very excited and you guys are going to come with me so let's go and have a day in the life with Carrie. And just in case you guys don't know who Network Rail is, they own, operate and develop Britain's railway infrastructure. Hey guys, so I have just arrived. I was supposed to vlog the whole train journey, but I got tired and I was so sleepy. So just got here. I'm very, very excited to meet her because you know, I just want to learn more about her engineering journey. I'm so excited to see what she's all about. So let's head inside. So excited to be joined by Kerry. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Kerry Ho. I'm a graduate of uh, electrical engineer working for Network Rail. So it's like a, I've been in the company for like a year and a half now. So I'm oh. doing like different rotational placement to kind mm -hmm. of get myself like up to the technical competency, like mm -hmm. the knowledge within the companies. So I've got a few questions to ask you that the sure. people want to know and we just want your honest opinion. <laughs> nothing, nothing crazy, nothing else, just your honest opinion, okay? A lot of people believe that when you're working in, you know, the network rail that you are always just wearing, you know, your PPE, what's it called? Is it orange attire? Uh, yeah, like the orange reflectors. Yeah, that you're always on the reflectors, always outside on the train tracks, just that's all you do. But actually, I think it's a little bit more complex than that. So what have you been doing? So when you are in the office and stuff like that what do you normally get up to so now currently i'm working on an r d project so mm -hmm. like uh, it's like working with uh, a team like uh, to develop a new software for like predictive maintenance so yeah. um this is like uh, some of the graph So we're actually looking into like uh, there's some uh, like a train is what we call a new measurement train like recording equipment if they are mm -hmm. in like a particular location like the profile of it is it correct so we are actually like comparing like the design records mm -hmm. against like um how what the train is measuring so we can okay. identify like uh, if there's any non-compliance in those area and then we can schedule the maintenance like the maintenance mm -hmm. team to look into it so this is like so something that quite interesting that we do. I guess a lot of it is also hands on, also research based, also, you know, looking into data and stuff and not just like being outside and like you said, getting your hands dirty and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can show you a little bit more on like when we go to the station that like there's some kind of like this um, initial design work that I kind of like investigated into. So mm, nice. Well, on that note, let's head on over to the station. station and i'm just excited to see it from your perspective because then i'll be in it with you i'll be like in the in crew yeah i'll be on the inside
<laughs> so guys, I've just changed into my high vis jacket, which makes me feel so excited. And here's Kerry in her regular gear that she would normally wear. Can you tell us what each item is? Okay, so this one is like a blue helmet. So normally, yes. like if you are competent, then yeah. like um, if you first start with railway, you have a blue helmet. Okay. And if you like be more experienced, then you will have the white helmet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then like we have high vis trousers, and then we need to wear like a boot, like proper boots okay. to be on site. Okay. Nice. Gloves, yeah, and also glasses. Is it more difficult for a female engineer to go on to build like a career, a successful career in this field? Um, I think like a, a lot of people would think about like railway is like a male dominating yes. industry. Like it's always kind of getting yourself like dirty in mm. like the field and in the construction site. But actually, like with the network rail, there are lots of types of like engineering that you can do. So mm -hmm. for myself, like uh, in the railway, you can have like track signaling, um, telecoms, uh, electrification and plant. Mm -hmm. So like a uh, lot of different things that you can choose. So depending on what you kind of uh, knowledge that you gain in the university, then like you can pick what you want to do. Although the ratio is like still quite low, but now I think the company are put investing more on it. So okay. to try to get like the thirty percent of that like a uh, female ratio a bit higher up now. So okay. and also I see like um, I've participated in multiple like different programs, and mm -hmm. I see that actually there are quite a lot of female engineers climb up the ladder wow. to be like direct of engineering like uh, or like program mm -hmm. engineering manager so like that's opportunity up there yeah. Yeah. and do you feel like if you were to want that you'd be supported to do that like at network rail do you think they support girls who want to you know go on to those higher positions yeah yeah there's like um, there are lots of like development programs like for mm. example i'm doing like a career discovery program nice. at the moment so it's like helping like a kind of a first starter like mm. in the business to kind of get some transferable skills so for nice. example i've uh, participated in some like networking sessions mm. and also like they teach you how to do like uh, build your own confidence and mm. also like how to uh, uh, like understand your strengths and nice. then it helps you to kind of find jobs Afterwards. Okay, yeah. that's re that is really, really <laughs> nice to hear. So guys, we are now at Birmingham New Street Station and we are at the Navigation Bridge. Is that what this is called? Uh, yeah, Navigation Bridge. Uh, you can see that like, um, there's like this platform around here that are like different tracks yes. on the side. You have like signals there uh -huh. as well. So th that is like the starting signal. So for example, your train, you can see that like the stopping area is around there. Uh -huh. and then if like there's sufficient distance yeah. for the train like to see the signal and then start going beyond there so like normally around in the station area like um, the speed is around 15 to 20 miles per, like, miles per hour it, mm -hmm. it's not like really fast and then up to a point if you see like towards the end of that area it will like merge the tracks together just standing at a lift but actually Carrie's team and people like her would be involved in creating this isn't that right yes so like one of the scheme that we have been working on is called SS for all scheme so we are like uh, upgrading a lot of like the station infrastructure so for nice. example we're building lifts like wow. for example like in front of the um, station we mm -hmm. built the ramps oh. as well and then like uh, we will make sure that like uh, the escalators and all the facilities are accessible wow. for people with mobility issues So this is like the plant room. So just now we see that like in the front you have the lift, but actually that's like a room at the back, which like they have like the pulley wheel system that can make the lift kind of go up and down. Like we have a lot of these type of like electrical signs. What did you study for you to be where you are today? For you to be called an electrical engineer, what did you just study and graduate in for you to get to this career path? My 
like A levels, like yeah. like physics, chemistry, math, and stuff. Let's pick like um, electronic engineering oh, in okay. uni. But electronic is a bit different from electrical. You yeah. did elect electronic, electronic, and then you moved into electrical. Yeah. So for yes. electrical, it's uh, it's more like about power grid. How do you uh-huh. get uh, like um, power that mm-hmm. perspective and um, to supply like your um, devices but like okay. if for el- electronic you're looking into the micro stuff like the uh, chips that you use in your mobile phone like those type of things um what i've done is like um, i've done a, did an mh degree like a mm. five year um university course yeah and then after that i did um two years of research okay. in phd but like i find myself not enjoying it because yeah. it's like uh, programming artificial intelligence those mm. things so i decided maybe like w- interacting with people is like More what you. I want mm. so that's why like, I kind of move into like getting a role like in the railway industry this is one of the site that I actually visit oh, previously so uh-huh. like I was on the train and then this is actually one of the feeder station mm. which like, actually we get um like the trains get the power from okay. so like you can see that like there are trains like which is a depot nearby and then there's trains passing through and then this is like the old building that we're actually like um demolishing and then okay. we're trying to build a new one nearby so what I we, uh, what I've done during that time is like just go and do a proper site visit and see like uh, what things are still kind of like safety hazard that we need to be aware nice. of So we are at the end of our day and obviously before we wrap up I just want to check in with you and you are currently at the coming towards the end of your two year scheme on the engineering graduate scheme yes. so and I think you said that you have a further like two years of support on there right? Yeah so like uh, we have a graduate team which is like they have to, um, some graduate uh, development coach which mm-hmm. will still kind of support us like throughout our journey even though we move on to a permanent role. Wow and how and just as you're coming towards that end and you're stepping into that space is there any anything you would do different if you could go back in time before you began your electrical engineering journey before you got on this graduate scheme before working for network rail what would you do different or what advice would you give to someone who's 16 and thinking about going into the field you're in yeah i think probably like if you ask uh, ask me for it i would Think that like if um, in the early stage when I was in the university, I would go out to like uh, um, in A levels, I would try to go out and to more like university mm-hmm. open days, try to understand like different university like what their courses are. If, is it like a research base or is it more like yeah. do they have like a placement year included? Because I personally find it really important is to placement. have that placement year. It's like it helps because I remember when I did mine, it's that period of time I didn't enjoy too much about that placement so yeah. that's why like, I picked another area yeah. with it and now I feel like I really enjoying the network rail uh, graduate scheme because this is something that actually impacts people yeah. like a lot of people like uh, passengers are taking the journey so yeah. like I feel really excited to be part of you that want, journey. You want that people facing people based yeah. stuff like that's more yeah. you. So oh, for beautiful. network rail like one of the vision is putting passenger first so like I think that's a really key thing what in the organization we are trying to do is like yeah. Make sure that as what I showed you previously about the lifts, we are bringing like mobility users into it. So it's people first all the time, and even I guess with the way that you've been telling me about how they support young people, even with like the mentorship schemes that they have, where you feel like, well, from what you were telling me, you said <laughs> that you feel like you know you've been able to have that constant mentorship from different people within Network Rail as you're going through your graduate scheme journey, and I think that's really really empowering to hear because a lot of young women might be nervous to step into this field because they feel like they'll be on their own or they won't yeah. be as supported. But from what I've been hearing from you all day it's just that it's very very diverse it's inclusive they're championing young women mm. getting into higher roles getting to senior roles and you just feel like they've got your back right yeah. and also like uh, the different types of placement that i've done i've like spent some time with the station management team like understand in the front line how it's being operated i went to like one of the railway operating center to see like how the signal coordinate trains from yeah. there and uh, i'm going to do my maintenance placement next uh, next week wow. so you actually have a lot of on-site experience and i'm doing like project engineering as well oh, so wow. it's like a wide range of things that you can be getting and, involved 
and that's what we love to hear like i love variety i love choice and if you're a young girl out there watching and you're curious about it please click the link that's in my bio so you can check out more information about how you can get onto these graduate schemes about how you can get involved in this world of engineering electrical engineering or working with network rail in the varying different departments that they've got that's the one thing i've learned today is that it's not just wearing the high vis and being on the train tracks like there's a lot more to it so make sure you check it out thank you so much for letting me spend the day with you kerry i appreciate it and you know we can be friends now if you want that's good and guys thank you so much for watching please do comment down below what your thoughts are and if you're interested in a career in engineering and i'll try and answer the questions i can <laughs> if not i'll just text you and yeah sure no problem <laughs>